I'm here in Parkland, Florida, the scene of this high school massacre. This is where investigators are asking anyone who knows the school shooting suspect to speak with them. The FBI is also asking for anyone with video of the massacre to get it to them. They are still looking for clues. One family cooperating with investigators is the family that took in the suspect. He was living with them. He moved in with them around Thanksgiving. They gave this suspect a home after his mother died this past November. So joining us now is Jim Lewis. He's the attorney representing that family. Jim, thank you very much for being here. This family, uh, I know they feel sickened and devastated today. Tell us about why they took him in three months ago. Well, he really didn't have a lot of choices. His mom had died. He wasn't doing well uh, where he was staying. And after about a week around Thanksgiving, uh, he knew the son because they had met each other here at this high school last year and they offered him a home. They had a, a, a room. He really had no other options and they brought him in. Did they see troubling signs of any behavioral problems with no, him? They, they saw some depression. Obviously he'd, he'd lost his mom, but they helped him get a job at a Dollar Tree store. They got him going to an adult education so he could try to get his GED and he seemed to be doing, doing better. Because he was expelled from this high school, the high school that he went into and brought his you know, AR-15 style weapon into, he was expelled. So what was that about? Well, that was over a year ago. And as I understand, there was some disciplinary problems, some fights. He was a smaller kid and some indication that there might've been some bullying going on. But again, he'd been away from the school for over a year and had never shared with them any contempt for the school or anybody here, no anger, just a lot of depression and stuff going on around the loss of his mother. Beyond the depression, did he seem mentally ill to them? They didn't see that. They, they didn't see a mentally ill person or they, they never would have let him live under their home. These folks opened their home out just to try to help the young man because he really had no other place to go. They, they did not see any danger. They didn't see any kind of predilection that this was going to happen. And they are horrified, just like everybody else. They're a part of this community. Um, their son was here at the school during the shooting. Didn't know he anything was, he about was it. He was a student it. here. He's, he's a student here He's a current here student here. And he was there at the time of the shooting. Right. And didn't know anything about it. And there are texts between the two of them earlier in the day. And there's nothing ominous. What are those texts? Uh... Just how you doing? What's going on? Yo, you coming over later? That kind of stuff. Nothing to indicate that anything bad was going to happen. Is it possible their son was a target? I, we, we don't know. We don't think so. We, we, we don't know anything what was in the motive. These folks are just as uh, out of the clue as anybody else is what the motive for this shooting was. Did this family know he had a gun? Uh, he had it. He brought it into the into the residence uh, with the rest of his personal possessions. It was locked in a gun safe. That was their rules as to how he ended up with the gun on this particular day. We don't know. Well, it was his gun. That's how they, he ended up with it. It was his gun. It was his gun. He had a key to that lockbox, right? And, and yes, it was his lockbox and his gun in his room. And these folks are horrified. They 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 did not see this coming at all from this young man. Did it worry them that a 19 year old had an AR-15 while he was depressed? You know, I, I really can't speak to that right now. Obviously, people are going to try to find fault from them that they should have I'm not seen, trying to cast, seen everything I, listen, and known everything. Jim, I'm not trying to cast fault on them. The fault lies with the shooter, OK? But should a depressed 19-year-old young man have an AR-15? I mean, well, isn't this one of the that's, warning that's, signs? That's something that, that Congress and everybody else have been debating for years, what the parameters should be. Look, this family did what they thought was right, which was take in a troubled kid and tried to help him. And that doesn't mean that they, he can't bring his stuff into their house. They, they had it locked up and believed that that was going to be sufficient, that there wasn't going to be a problem. Nobody saw this kind of aggression or motive in this kid that he would ever do anything like this. Yeah, listen, all I'm asking you for are clues because investigators are talking to this family and they're looking for clues. So did the family think that there was anything going on with him? Did they think that he was violent? Everything in this day, no, nothing that it was there any any hint of being violence. This day seemed very normal. Looking back at it, the only thing that they see is he did not go up and go with the father to the school that day. And the reason- you mean to work? Well, no, to school. He was going to an adult education place to try to get his GED. And the father would normally take him on his way to work in the morning. So what did, what happened in the morning? What, uh, why didn't when, he when go? When they tried to wake him up and get him up, he said something to the effect of it's Valentine's Day. I don't go to school on Valentine's Day. And what and, did they think well, about they that? They just blew it off to some, you know, this is some kid, that 19-year-old, that just didn't want to get up and go to school that day and, and left it at that. Did he have a relationship, uh, like a romantic relationship? We, was we, there a girlfriend not involved? Not aware of any. There's none that we really hear about. But um, 
you know, he, he was a little bit of a loner, a little, uh, I've heard him described as being a little quirky, but nothing to indicate that he was violent, that he was ever aggressive towards anyone or threatening towards anyone. You know, he had a big digital footprint. Were they aware of any of his social they media weren't. postings? They're, they're not social media people, okay, the parents. They, they're, they're just not that kind of folks. That, and, and he's an adult, and, and, and they tried to help him. But did they check up on him and, and follow him every minute of every day? They didn't, because they didn't see any of the signs that would indicate that there was anything really amiss, that he was capable of something violent. What about the son, his friend from high school? Did he know that he had social media postings? I'm not, I'm not sure. The, the son, these folks are in shock. You have to understand. They don't know which way is up right now. You know, their home is being turned inside out. They cooperated with the police. We were down there late talking to them, tell, answering all the police questions, showing them phones. They opened their house up. The police got a search warrant because it may be a legal issue because the shooter had a room in the house and he wasn't there to consent, so they got a search warrant. But this family and the son have co have cooperated with law enforcement every which way they can. Yeah, I know. I mean, this is just trying to piece together the clues to see if there's any red flags. And listen, depression is a red flag with young men. Access to a weapon is a red flag with young men. And, you know, we, we all have to sort of be vigilant about this. So what is the family saying today? How are they doing? What's what what are they doing with their son? How are they explaining all they're, of this? They're, they're keeping close. They, they are holding close to their son. They're happy that law enforcement doesn't consider their son had anything to do with this. So they're, they're happy to be vindicated in that way, but they're just so bereaved like everybody else here at the loss of all of these young lives for no, no good reason. And then they, they care about this kid. They took him into the home. But as the mother told me, that if they had any inkling that there was something that this kid was capable of something like this, they never would have brought him into their home. You don't see that. You don't think that somebody that, that like this comes into your home is capable of something like this. It's beyond the pale that they could ever imagine something like this would happen.